Hello and welcome back to the Casualology YouTube channel. Today we have a playthrough of career mode that I finished in about 30 minutes and I've cut it down to about 10 minutes for you guys so you can see we have our first launch here. Probably also saw one of the main features which is the tech tree where you can unlock parts. Um, I heard on a certain channel that this mode was going to be cancelled because of challenge mode but it seems it's actually been upgraded to work with challenge mode because there is differences like now when, hopefully as you shall see soon, when we unlock the new solid rocket motors and the heat shield, you can see we're going to get all the size of heat shield, whereas before we'd only get the basic size. So it seems like it's being made so that it's actually more, the progression makes more sense and you have more freedom in how you achieve the goals, which is really nice because this is one of my favorite features they've had in a long time. You see we're building our space shot here. Oh, that's a demonstration of how you can get through all of the different sizes. It's funny, there's actually a crash booster to the side of the pad. Notably, that crash booster brings me to another problem I have. Well, I guess it's the first problem I've mentioned. The solid rockets are so pathetic. Like, honestly, I get that it's so the progression is more interesting, but they're just completely useless otherwise. Like how you can use solid rocket motors to kick your stages farther in real life, and they're actually like kind of effective, you get a lot of trust out of them. The space flight simulator ones are just really, really terrible. Like to the point where they're not useful for anything except these first few missions where you're forced to. You can see I actually had to use one as a heat shield here because I forgot to equip an actual heat shield. So that was kind of a whoops, but I actually not survived anyway. Oh yeah, the margins are so small that if we brought a heat shield, the extra like half ton might have stopped us from reaching space. Well, that's the first successful space shot, and you can see as the challenges are completed, we get money in career mode, so both systems are working at the same time. I haven't tried hard career mode or challenge career mode or anything like that, so I don't know if those work together. If anyone knows, I would appreciate if you would let me know in the comments. So, thanks. See, I'm just uh, setting up an orbital launch vehicle, uh, our first one. Uh, you can see that this one of the new parts they made for career mode, the Peregrine engine which is basically just a really bad early rocket engine. It has horrible ISP and the trust leaves a lot to be desired. It's funny because I always wanted an engine in between the Hawk and the Broadsword, but the Peregrine is just so inefficient that even though the trust is there, it's, it just doesn't work out really. It's also interesting because with the Redstone Atlas pack, you get the other weak engines for the Atlas. I think they're actually better than the Peregrine though, so that's kind of funny. See, I got the thumbnail shot here really like how this rocket looks, I named it the Peregrine one because it's got one of those engines. Sort of like how SpaceX named the Falcon rockets after their engine numbers. See we have to use a Peregrine second stage and you can see just how fast that runs out of fuel with the terrible ISP that it's got going. Uh, thankfully we have enough fuel left over for the deorbit burn after a few orbits. Just playing this without a visible interface so that hopefully it looks nice for you guys. And we're just entering the atmosphere here. Nice and calm, relatively. I quite like what they did with the capsule giving it doors. It's one of those little quality of life features that just makes the game that much nicer, really. Rockets with capsules just look a lot nicer. And we get two challenges. So that's another, that's quite a bit of money again for the program. Save that has the name I mentioned earlier. <coughs> And now we're going to undertake our final mission, and that is going to be originally to land on the captured asteroid was the main goal. So we're going to develop a rocket for that, and you can see me using the, what's it called, the Colibri engine, yeah, I was about to say Grasshopper. Well, if there's anyone around here who remembers when it was called that, that was, that was quite, quite a while ago, wasn't it? So I'm just building a booster, sort of in the style of the Titan II. Unfortunately, we still have to use the Peregrine, so it has to be way bigger than it would otherwise need to be to reach the asteroid. But you can see that overbuilding it in this way is actually going to help us out later. Because the plan was to launch this twice, once for the asteroid, one for the moon. But you can see we don't end up needing the lunar launch because we end up with quite a bit of leftover propellant on this launch. And that's all I'll say for now. Uh, stick around if you want to see it. I'll get that viewer attention up. Huh? And we're just doing some more edits. I think this looks like a quite nice launch vehicle. 
I actually managed to use the SRBs here because our trust to weight ratio was so low. And the Peregrine 2 is ready for flight. And you can see my gripe with the boosters here, they barely even give you a kick. They basically fell right back down onto the pad. And those two Peregrines are barely giving us enough trust to climb. But I mean, honestly, it's fairly reasonable. They burn fuel so fast that the TWR kind of takes over. So I guess that makes them slightly less bad. They're still garbage though. I will stand by that conviction. And now we're just boosting into orbit. It's kind of crazy, once again, how bad they are. Because like, if I had a Frontier engine on that stage, or a, a Hawk, or a pair of those engines, we could have probably made this vehicle an SSTO on that stage. Maybe we could even reach, who knows, Mars. Mars tour achievement would be possible. But this, this Calibri stage is really saving the day has tons of delta v because it's very minimalist so you can see we just get out to asteroid real quick always annoying trying to get into that tiny sphere of influence so that's just a bit of fiddling and we just get out there of course these missions aren't super realistic you wouldn't want to be sitting in a uh, one-man capsule for the what weeks that it takes to get out here I'll try to pick some music that complements this well when I finish recording this commentary. Just another silly thing we had to do. We had to burn toward the asteroid so the video went wouldn't be too bad. I mean, on what, what landing approaches do you have to burn toward the place you're trying to land on? You can see another one of the lovely quality of life features they've been adding, like the rocks. And one of the quality of life features that I really like the way that they seem to be developing the game is these little things that slowly but surely make it better. And I like that approach, like the curved fairings or the big struts. Rather I haven't made a space station on this channel, they'd be useful for that. We should do that at some point. Uh, I intended to get the lunar orbit achievement here since we had plenty of fuel left over. But since we had so much, I've decided to rename it to Tentative Lunar, Bo lunar Voyager. Because I think we're, we're going to attempt a landing now. Because otherwise we would have had to launch the second vehicle. And that wouldn't have been particularly efficient. So we're just going to try this out. So we have attempt one here at lunar landing. We just had to get the achievement real quick. Because it requires you to be about, above 10 kilometers apogee and perigee. If I remember right. You can't get it using a low pass elliptical orbit. And I kind of overestimated how high trust the, the Calibri almost called it the grasshopper again sorry was and you can see i had to retry that's the only quick load load of this playthrough so there's that people actually speed run this mode on uh, speedrun.com so that's interesting if you want to check that out i don't think this qualifies for anything very much i think last time i checked the world record was like 15 minutes this was 30 minutes so i mean for like not trying that's not that bad eh? and having to make rockets that look decent and also do things to enhance the commentary. Just using the last of four propellant to get a good aero braking pass for our capsule. And you can see we have a very fiery re-entry here. But I mean, that's the end of the program really, because that should finish the tech tree. Tech tree is very short, they haven't changed this in a while. We're just pulling through the atmosphere now into the lower layers. I kind of wish they'd add clouds back in. Those have been missing for a while. But I mean, we're gonna get water, so I guess that makes up for it. Plenty of challenges and $160 million of funding, if I read that correctly. I'm just doing some more changes to the launch vehicle here, even though we won't use it again to make it look better. Um, I don't feel bad about clipping like this because it doesn't help us at all. And now we just unlock the end of the tech tree. And thank you all so much for watching. And if you enjoyed the video, please like and subscribe. Goodbye.